Uh, I think it's in a good spot. Uh, the kids came back from uh, their break after spring football with a, a great attitude. Um, we've got some guys that play a lot of football around here, so they get it. And uh, they're doing a great job of leadership, and then we're just starting to develop. Obviously, you know, we were here last year talking a lot about, you know, getting not beating Michigan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back back. Team up you're, north. You're in that same boat again, so kind of what – is there any difference, any different point of emphasis this year? I mean, to me it's the same. You know, we all know what, we all know the goal around here, so the emphasis is still the same. That's part of it, so it's got to keep – he grinded. There was a lot of, you know, talk last year about, you know, injuries and you guys dealt with. Is there anything you looked at this offseason in terms of things you need to do differently in terms of injury prevention? Um, I think we do that every year. We, uh, we analyze what we do, how we do it, why we do it. Um, we have a lot of resources around here to help us, um, you know, come up with the best plan. Um, you look at kind of how we practice, how we, when we practice, what we eat, how we eat, when we get our sleep. It's, it's, it's a gamut of things that we look at. Uh, I think you do that every year, and last year was no different. Do you study, um, when you study that, do you feel like you guys find it's more based on luck, especially with a violent sport like football? When injuries happen, is it mostly based on luck or bad luck? <laughs> I mean, I think you got to turn over every, and the jobs that we do, I think you got to turn over every stone from a sports performance standpoint, from athletic training to physical rehab to nutrition, strength conditioning, speed development, all that you have to look at. You have to look at equipment. Um, I think that's just what you have to do every year and kind of see how you do things and how you can do it better, and, and you do. I think a lot of people from the outside world thought there was an increase in soft tissue issue injuries and that sort of stuff. Is that made up? Is that correct? How do you view it? I mean, to me, it's no different than any, any other year. Um, the problem was, the, one of them was Jackson. Yeah, so it's just and, in the spot. Yeah, and the way he got, I mean, I'm not supposed to talk about injuries, but the way he got hurt wasn't your typical. So, yeah, that's it. Because of the hit, the way that he was yeah, like the low way he got and hit. high. Yeah, he got, he got kind of hinged yeah. over. Yeah. I mean, originally I thought he hurt his head, right. which I think everybody did in the stadium. But yeah, it looked like targeting. Yeah, just one of those things. And we did a lot of research of in the NFL you now when they deal with that, you know, you know what their what their plan is. So we talk about the turf and how the NFL wants to get rid of that turf and blah blah blah. I mean, you really got to you really got to look at the what research is real, and you really got to look into all those numbers. I know, I know it's a point of interest for really everybody. I get it. But, it is the, the Players Association, the NFL. In the NFL, the NFL Players Association is pushing it. It's not like it's you know, like a media creation or something like that. Those oh, are yeah, like they it. do. So, but if I guess if players have a concern, do you have to look at it more closely? Just to, I mean, because I mean, I mean, if it's coming from 100%. Players, I think the facilities people that looked at all that, they looked into all of it, and you just continue to look into it. But, yeah, I... I you just got to be careful with the studies that you read. Like, is it just a study or is it just like somebody giving you some information? So. Obviously, you had a couple situations last year, like with Jackson, with Travion, where those guys tried to play through injuries yeah. and they were just never able to quite get right. Is there anything that you learned from that that maybe changes your approach? You know, again, I'm not the head athletic trainer, so um, I just think the kids want to play and they try to. You know, yeah. football's a tough sport and you just got to. I mean, I think the only time you're fresh is like probably early May in, in May, and then just you know, football's football's part of it. So, yeah. You mentioned that you know nutrition aspect. How important is that? You know what Kayla does with the players in terms of getting their diets right. I mean, again, when I I think it has more to do than we put emphasis on it, but it's. It has a lot to do with it. I mean, you are what you eat. I mean, that was that used to be a slogan back when I was in middle school. You are what you eat, and eating hard and eating healthy, or eating healthy and uh, eating clean, it's really hard for a 17, 18, 19 year old. You know, we have we have a few meals up here a day, but they leave the facility, and so we really got to work on. You know, you can see all the information around here with the TVs and education and 
you know, we do the uh, DEXA scan, which measures body fat and bone density and uh, lean muscle mass, and you have to, everything has to be based off of that, not just, not just weight. When you're determining like what a player's weight should be, how, what's kind of a balance here? Like Caden Curry was talking this spring, like he gained 15 pounds and he thought he was slower. Like how do you kind of balance that? I mean, what you I think number one, it comes from the science that you, that you get from the scans, what your body can hold, how much lean muscle mass your frame can hold. That's number one. Number two, what position do you play? It's hard to play defensive end at 195 pounds in the Big Ten. It just is. So, and then speed and athleticism and change of direction, all those go into it. And it's not, it's not, the, it's, it's, it's a conglomerate of people that advise the players what they should weigh. And then you take 30 years of data or data, however you say it, and you say, okay, this is, but it's all, it's all based on leanness. The fastest guys that we've ever had here, Denzel Ward was a 6.5% body fat in a DEXA scan. That's like ridiculous. The fastest guy we've had. Terry McLaurin was the second leanest guy. Fastest guy we had. So speed, leanness, muscle mass, obviously genetics play a part, the amount of force you produce, all that stuff goes into all those decisions. Yeah, Caden's Kate, up to 260 according to Larry Johnson now. I mean, did, yeah. does, he, does, he, but does he look like a different guy? I mean, I mean, does, from a well, speech. It's funny yeah. you ask that because we just, we just did uh, some of our, I don't want to say testing, but we looked at some evaluation things and he ran pretty fast. He yeah. was the fastest D lineman that we had today. Yeah. So, pretty good. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it was almost like, you know, it's funny. came on, came off. And, but so he, he, the biggest problem with freshmen is they're, like they're insecure, they think they got away yeah. a lot. And you don't have to, you, you have to be able to do your job. You have to stop the run, you have to be able to rush the passer, like you have, have to be able to bend. And a lot of guys come in like scared to death, like I gotta get big, I gotta get big, I gotta get big. Easy, no you don't. And the first thing we do is that scan, and it tells you so much about, and then obviously Kayla gets them on a diet plan, and you start training them for the, for the position that they play and what they gotta do, job description. Yeah. Hey. Nick, it, it just amazes me though how in depth y'all get individually with each guy. How much? I'm not looking for a specific number. How much time does that take? I mean, how, how involved is that? It takes a lot. Again, because you have you have a specific program based on position. You have specific programs based on individual needs and qualities that they either are weak at or strong at, enhancing yeah. the strengths, working on qualities. It just and then you got 120 guys and you're only allowed eight hours a week or whatever it is. It's like a lot of it is education. A lot of it is, you know, just trying to fit them in the right buckets and try to develop them as best they can. How do you, who, give me an example. We've talked about this before, but give me an example of a, just maybe a person who's not here anymore who transformed maybe the greatest during his period. Yeah, yeah. Is there a guy, I mean, give me one example. of a, I mean, I, now that he's in the media, I'm, I like to use Joshua Perry. Oh, yes. I mean, he was he was a 220 pound. I show recruits all the time, and we have a list of guys that we show. But he was a 220 pound outside linebacker that you know how many years later, three or four years later, he's 250 pounds, faster, more explosive, stronger. His body it looked completely different. Now I'm not. I was going to say something, but he'll he'll hear it. So. Just continue to keep doing that because yeah. he's big as yeah, he's big as hell right now. Yeah. <laughs> so was he skinny fat when he showed up? No, he was just That's skin- what Jeff Ulanek always said. Yeah, skinny fat. He, yeah. No, he just he was just skinny and you know needed yeah. to develop. Um, he's one I, I love to use Terry McLaurin, um, who was you know whatever and leaves here at two oh five and second fastest guy we've ever had here. Yeah. Do you see a uh, lot where a guy can maybe be the same weight as Fred or four years he was as a freshman, but he learns how to play faster? hundred percent. Raekwon McMillan was a perfect example. He walked in here 240. You can't, he can't, you're playing linebacker nowadays. Maybe 20 years, 25 years ago, you could. He had to maintain his weight, his body changed from whatever percent of fat that he had. And lean muscle mass went up. And that takes a lot of work because it's so, that's the hardest thing. Is, is your diet and changing your body. And, but like when the Taiwan Malone shows up. Yeah. You know, obviously you, I, I would think you get info from the, from the other place if they're willing to offer it, right? Yeah, it's funny. It's, it's funny. Yeah, we, we've had two Ole Miss guys that, number one, their strength coach used to be an intern here, Nick Savage. Right. 
And then I, we just hired A.T. Turner from Ole Miss, so he knows he's, him and uh, Davis and Nick Benosa. Yeah, so it's, it was good to get some info on him right away. And you kind of knew the background of their fitness levels and their training background, and you kind of just grow from there. So so what, what did you have to change with him, though? I mean, just in a, you know, a nutshell. I mean, just in you know, he, he's just got here maybe two weeks ago, yeah. so he's more in a – just, evaluation. Yeah, we, we consider those transitional athletes just to make sure their the level of progression is different than, you know, say uh, Donovan Jackson, who's been here, yeah. you know, yeah. for three years now. Where uh, Davidson got here in January and he needed to gain weight because he was skinny and maintain that speed and work on flexibility and, you know, all those things. Yeah. That, that, hey, one other quickie, I'll get out of here. Uh, I asked you a while ago, a guy who's transformed, et cetera. How much has the, um, from your side of things, the work with quarterbacks changed over the last 20 years? Meaning, what, 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 do you, what do you hone in on more than anything else anymore? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 what, what, yeah. what are the big things that maybe weren't big things 10 years ago? Because again, I mean, uh, you want them to get bigger and faster and stronger. Yeah. But, you want to be able to do their you don't job. Want to affect this, yeah. but you want just to be stronger. Yep. Athleticism, flexibility, yeah. mobility, uh, footwork. Um, You're still in one of Yeah, like st strength and speed. I'm just thinking, you know, the quarterbacks that at least that I've been involved with, we had giant ones. Yeah. At the other place, we had, you know, <laughs> very talented out. ones here. We have a, there's a ex the, the national championship quarterback giant is down there today right now working out. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then you got guys like the ones we've had in the last, you know, CJ showed up at 180 pounds, like, it's not going to work. Yeah. You know, where Kyle and Devin were a little different, but that's just not going to work. So he had to get, he's had to gain weight, get stronger, and it took him a little bit. And, but the biggest thing that we work on that I, is, is the leadership component. Like, yeah. I make them feel uncomfortable from a leadership standpoint, because they got, I say, you want to be a quarterback, then here's the program. If you want to be the quarterback, here's what you have to do. So. Yeah. You got to be seen. You got to be felt. You got to be heard. And for the most part, I mean, if you look back at our quarterbacks that we've had, they, they've been able to do that. Cal McCord, Devin Brown. Where, where, where have you seen change about him over Cal over three years? I mean, two and a half years, and, and Devin. I mean, it's just you know, CJ leaving. I just think you just okay. There it is. Now it's my turn, or at least I'm in line to be. That's natural. right? Yeah, natural, natural. And Devin's been awesome. Like just. Competing, both of them, and it's fun. It's fun, though. Yeah. See, I always ask uh, Ryan. I said, "How can you really be exude that leadership until you're, you know, nobody appoints a leader. He, he rises, and yet, if you're not the starter, I know it's you know, hard. You're held back in that regard, right? It's hard, especially now. You're not playing football. Like you're yeah. training, you're working out, you're doing drills, you're doing seven on seven, you're or not, you're, you're running routes. You know, we don't do seven on seven, but you're running routes. You're getting with your wideouts." Um, around here, you got to keep up with the wideouts because they, you know, they're that's a whole other level for, for the quarterbacks. But I just think that gives them opportunity to lead. These the young wideouts, you know, Brandon has just got here. That's another guy to lead. So I, I love I love the development of quarterback. You, you brought up the position, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. By every account, you know, and even when we get to watch him a little bit or around, is, is that the kind of guy you got to almost tell, hey? Enough's enough. I mean, explain how you handle that. Absolutely. You... Well, I'll tell you a quick story. When we first got, when he first got here, it was Ameka, Kyle, and Marvin, and they were freshmen. And we haven't even, we didn't even start working out yet. It was like January 5th or something. Yeah. And they're out here at 5.15 in, in the morning running routes. Like, not throwing and catching and, you know, jacking around. They're running routes. And I'm just like, hey, guys, we this is a long winter. Take it easy. Let's get a progression, but just that want to and that desire, man. And nowadays, you, you have to. When I talk to senior, it's not about like, it, it's about Marvin has to make sure that Marvin doesn't overdo, you know, yeah. overtrain or. So what that monarch's been good. What is it like to work with a guy like that that he wants to make? You know, I tell you, he, he better got, today. He, better today than he was yesterday. I got another quick story. So. You know, we did a lot of, we do a lot of competition things here. It's like winner loser, and we had the fast guys going against the fast guys. And Marvin slipped, he slipped. And he didn't win. He lost. He got lost. Somebody else, whatever. All on the sheets, and we rank everything on the sheets. Lost. 
Marvin wants to be the top dog. Like group, speed group one is all the 10 fastest guys on the team. Speed group two. And if you win the most, you move up a group. Yeah. So if you win the most in group two, you move up to group one. If you lose the most in group one, you move down to group two. And if you win the most in group one, you're the top dog. Like we made a huge, big deal about it. Well, the one day he slipped, and I think Denzel Burke was the top dog. So I get a call from Keenan Bailey, and he's at the facility doing work, and, and Marvin's here catching balls or whatever, and he sees the sheet. And they call up, Keenan calls me up. He's like, hey, uh, Coach Mick, uh, you know, we got a problem. I'm like, what? It's like, Marvin's mad. I go, about what? He's like, uh, he's, he's, not, he's not the top dog. He's number two. I'm like, uh, what are you talking about, speed groups? Yeah. I said he slipped, and then he stopped. You don't, yeah. you lose. He's like, ah, oh, he's bad, man. He says he's not even coming to workouts tomorrow. And I started laughing, and I got him on speaker. And then he's talking more about, you know, he's just, you know, I don't know, man. I've never seen Marv like this. It's competitive. Yeah. My wife hears it. So my wife's picking. I'm like, he lost. He slipped. No, win or loser, man. So my wife hears it, too, and she's like, well, you know, you probably could have started him back, and, you know, maybe it wasn't Marvin's fault. She's taking his side. <laughs> so now I'm mad at Marvin because he's mad. I'm mad at Keenan for calling me, and I'm mad at my wife for taking Marvin's side. I don't sleep at all. I just want to get to the facility. And to get to the facility, here comes Marvin. He's going to show up. And I come in. I go, why are you mad? He's like, guys, oh, BS, uh, a top dog I won. I said, Marv, you slipped, and then you stopped. He's like, in a game, right away. In a game, if you if you fall start, just get another play. It's first 15. I'm like, not in this drill, you know. <laughs> so anyway, that, I, the whole week, I was like, I, have, I didn't sleep last night because of you. You and my wife, I've had enough. That's the kind of kid he is. Yeah. And that's what you want, like, just so competitive. Hey, when was it?